The design of shallow foundations for seismic loading. The design of shallow footings for seismic loading is not well understood in the engineering community. The current practice is to apply a factor of safety to cover the uncertainties in soil and the response of soil under seismic loading. However, research shows that the applying the factor of safety without applying seismic loading in multiple directions is not adequate. This paper discusses the finding of four journal articles that explain how seismic loading affects the footings. While using a factor of safety design and unilateral loading does not always produce the most critical design criteria, and how to use the soil properties to our advantage. The first article, Reliability-Based Design and Analysis and Design of Strip Footings Against Bearing Capacity Failure, investigates the analysis and design of a strip footing subjected to a vertical load with and without pseudo-static seismic loading. Massif's article discusses how footings are tested, what types of loading functions are applied, and how the loads affect the bearing capacity of soil. The second article, Reliability of Shallow Foundations Subjected to Multidirectional Seismic Loading, the performance of a shallow foundation during multidirectional seismic loading is discussed. The article looks at a mat foundation in New Zealand and discusses how the size of the footing affects the factors of safety during seismic loading. The third article, Capacity Settlement and Engineering Dissipation of Shallow foot Footings Subjected to Rocking, considers shear walls attached to foundations and how to design to allow uplift and energy dissipation. The fourth article, Seismic Bearing Capacity and Settlement of Foundations, discusses how the, to use the Coulomb mechanism to calculate the settlement of a foundation during a seismic event and how to determine the correct factor of safety for the bearing capacity design. A brief discussion of all three articles is presented below in order. Reliability-Based Analysis and Design of Strip Footings In the first article, Masif, Supra, and Lowe investigated the analysis and design of a strip footing subjected to a vertical load with and without pseudostatic seismic loading through reliability-based analysis. Reliability-based analysis is based off of reliable, uh, reliability index, a factor of safety, or from the failure probability. The index is a measure of safety that accounts for all the uncertainties in the input variables. The failure probability calculates the probability of a failure for the vector of random variables that would describe the soil properties and performance function. For the analysis performed, several parameters were defined. A quasi-static representation of the earthquakes and their effects is used. The horizontal seismic coefficient of the earthquake acceleration for the soil and structure is assumed to be the same. The random variables for the functions are considered to be the soil shear strength parameters, the horizontal seismic coefficient, cohesion, and the angle of internal friction. The performance function used to determine the failure probability is based on the bearing failure of the soil. After the parameters are defined, two models were developed and used to determine the failure mode of the strip footings. The first model is a translational symmetrical multi-block failure mechanism. The first model is used for determining the bearing capacity of the vertically loaded footing without pseudostatic seismic loading. The model creates failure planes symmetrical about the center line of the strip footing using 12 rigid blocks at each side. The second model is a translational non-symmetrical multi-block failure mechanism. The second model is used to determine the bearing capacity of the vertically loaded footings with pseudostatic pseudo seismic loading. The failure plane radiates 180 degrees from one corner of the strip footing, also using 12 rigid blocks. From the failure mechanisms and the loading functions, bearing capacity is found by equating the total rate at which work is done by the foundation load, the soil weight in motion, the horizontal seismic loads, and the ground surface surcharge to the total rate of energy dissipation along the lines of velocity discontinu discontinuities. In order to make the results tangible, the investigation used a strip footing width equal to 2 meters with a unit soil weight of 18 kilonewtons per cubic meter. A surge charge was not considered. The internal friction angle for the soils considered is typically between 20 and 40 degrees. Mechanism 1 found that the failure probability of a vertically loaded strip footing is more sensitive to the angle of friction than to the cohesion of the soil. The vertically loaded strip footing reliability index calculation is found to be more conservative when using critical probabilistic surface rather than the critical deterministic surface. The deterministic approach for the critical deterministic surface, the factor of safety or ultimate load, is based on the minimization of failure mechanism functions over a range of trial failure surfaces. The critical probability ballistic surface is found by minimizing the quadratic forms of the failure me mechanism functions with respect to the random soil variables and the geometric parameters of the failure mechanism. In turn, the reliability index decreases with the increase of the applied load. The probability failure increases when the angle of friction varies greatly within the soil profile. Mechanism 2 found that the failure 
probability of the vertically loaded foot strip footings with pseudostatic seismic loading, the angle of friction can be ignored when the vertical load is lower than the deterministic ultimate load. Reliability of shallow foundations during seismic loading. In the second article by Larkin, the reliability of the shallow foundation subjected to multidirectional seismic loading is discussed. Larkin presents a probabilistic method of analysis for undrained seismic loading of a map foundation embedded in a fine-grained saturated soil. The probabilistic method is similar to the one used by a massive Subra and Lowe. The load on the foundation is represented by the relationship between the exceedance probability and the spectral canal acceleration of the fundamental period of the structure, and a resistance function represented by the undrained shear strength of the foundation soil. The, re the results of the analysis give the probability of failure with respect to the foundation failure in bearing and or sliding. Larkin's main concern for foundation to do design today is that many sources of uncertainty exist in the geotechnical engineering. Variations in soil properties, errors from sampling and testing, analytical model differences, and in comparison to real behavior of the soil structure system, construction practices and magnitude of application of loads. From research and testing, the most important soil parameter and bearing capacity in the sliding design subjected to the seismic loading is the undrained shear strength. Larkin investigates a map foundation in New Zealand at a Class B site in the zones of a major seismic hazard. The foundation is in a saturated cohesive soil. The seismic loading is determined from a PSHA analysis using a design life of 50 years. The loading function for the probabilistic design is applied to the foundation at a 45 degree angle. A pseudostatic method assuming a homogeneous layer of soil is used to evaluate the resistance of a shallow foundation under seismic loading. The study found that as the foundation dimensions increase, the contribution from the bearing vanishes. When the transition acceleration equals the shear strength in bearing, the limiting dimension occurs. In return, as the foundation dimensions decrease, the reliability becomes more controlled by bearing due to overturning in the component of the foundation system. Horizontal seismic loading causes a reduced bearing area and additional shear forces, which causes an increase in the probability of failure. The deterministic design for statical, static vertical loading using the mean values of soil parameters and a factor of safety between 3 and 4 produced an extremely low likelihood for, of failure for soils whose coefficient of variation sh of shear strength is less than 0 0.5. The deterministic design does not, however, give a sufficient factor of safety for seismic loading. The results of the testing show that the critical orientation of the loading function, function on the foundation occurred at 30 and 130 degrees. The direction of the loading function influences the contribution to the failure probability of the different components of sliding and bearing. Sliding is found to be the sole mode of failure for orientations between 0 and 75 degrees. The loading direction did not cause the magnitude of the shear loading during the sliding mode to change. Conventional design does not look at the bidirectional loading of the foundations under seismic loads and consequently does not produce a critical state. Larkin concludes that the engineer should consider two orthogonal directions of horizontal loading at a diagonal of the foundation. Applying the load in this manner will increase the probability of failure by 50%.